Hello, I am Michael Gaucher, and I'm building a software program that is going to uh, show RSS feeds. And this is a Windows-based program that is built using Microsoft.net, C Sharp, and then we're going to use SQL Server as the database backend. And before we get to the point of a visual program, we need to start with a command line program. And what this command line program does is it converts data from SQLite to SQL Server. You'll have to catch up on the earlier videos that talk about this program existing in Linux first and how that conversion process takes us to the point we are today. And so the conversion program is done at this point. I'm pretty, pretty proud of that. I'm happy about that. And so we got a little bit of housekeeping and bookkeeping to do. Um, we're going to refine the project's GitHub configuration. When we used Visual Studio to automate the creation of the uh, project file, the project file, and the project file is uh, very similar to a auto auto comp file in Linux. Microsoft Visual Studio uh, project files, they're like autoconf files. There's, it's like a, a combination between autoconf and automake. And so they streamline uh, the, the translation, they help, trans, uh, they help streamline the instructions and the processes that you would need to go from uh, software code to an actual program executable that you can deploy, distribute, put in an app store, wherever, and uh, run on your computer. And so when you have these project files uh, created through Visual Studio, it is, I wouldn't say inevitable, but it's part of the design of Visual Studio. It inevitably produces ancillary files, files that help with the project execution process, the code translation process. But these files do not have to be tracked in GitHub. They absolutely do not. So, um, you want to exclude those files from the GitHub repository. It's far better to uh, leave those files out of GitHub because many of those uh, detailed files are very specific to your computer. And many of them, they're simply cache, cache what we would call cache files. And if you track them through GitHub, um, there could be some issues with the, the way your Visual Studio solution work. That's less true today than, let's say it was when you were using a source control system in Windows called Visual Source Safe. Now there, if you had tracked files that were purely read-only, you, you were in a world of hurt if those files um, required frequent modifications and updates and they were machine-specific. But out of a, an abundance of caution, it's good to take those type of files and leave them untracked and put those in the git ignore file uh, for your GitHub, uh, for your git configuration, which will also be your GitHub configuration for that project. I'm also going to discuss GitHub uh, security, not so much git security, but GitHub security. You know, GitHub is an automation of git, right? G-I-T. Uh, GitHub, G-I-T-H-U-B, right? It's an online service that provides an automated, uh, a, an enhanced automated um, uh, space, right, for the Git uh, software technology, software uh, process, right? Because that's what Git is. Git is software that helps you track versions on your files to help you um, branch out code so that you can make modifications in different branches to help you merge code changes from different parties, different people, different areas, right? Git itself allows you to do all of that. And then GitHub puts a web, website, visual interface on top of that. And so GitHub is totally entitled to put additional rules and, different, and additional procedures and, and different uh, slightly or, or even radically different ways of doing things on top of that core Git uh, technology. And so I'm going to discuss that a little bit. 
and then um, finally publish this version of the conversion program to GitHub. Have that in GitHub, have that set in stone uh, for this development wave and um, you know, be satisfied that we have reached this far and got this accomplished. And then once that is published on GitHub, because I'm publishing this from my computer to GitHub, and while I do trust the tools, when the tools say it's published, it's always helpful to go to github.com forward slash Michael Gaucher and look and see if indeed those updates are there. You'll see on the web page, you'll say, this change was made a few seconds ago, a minute ago, whatever, however long it takes you to actually get around to getting to GitHub. And that's a good way of visually verifying uh, what you've done. And then after all of that is said and done, I'm going to run the data conversion program one last time and then move on to developing a graphical user interface on Microsoft Windows using WPF and C Sharp. Visual Studio has a panel that connects us to the Git uh, server that um, is on GitHub. And it also uh, connects us to the Git database that is on the local machine governing the versions and the version changes for our project. And this Git panel allows us to visually access the Git database to, in this case, remove those objects, those files that we don't want tracked by Git. Because there are certain files that Visual Studio will generate behind the scenes that we don't care about. And if we were to track them through Git, it wouldn't necessarily cause us a problem, but it would muddy the picture from a version control review standpoint. It would make things less clear in terms of what actually changed in the project that is relevant to the software that we are building. And so we have the ability here to, dis to select and decide which objects we do not want tracked. And the ones that we don't want tracked when we right click and we choose ignore this item, for example, um, that, that ignore um, request is going to be written to a file called .gitignore. That's the name of the file. And so this whole process here is designed to visually edit the .gitignore file so that the Git process, the Git database, on our local machine that knows which files to not even bother us about in terms of a, a file that has changed. So these files that I'm referring to that, that uh, Visual Studio generates that we don't want to track, that we want to ignore, uh, those files, they change all the time behind the scenes and we don't want any notifications or indications that those files um, should be updated in the Git repository. And so the modifications have been made to the Git ignore file and we're going to um, publish those changes to the Git repository. And so we want to uh, push these changes to GitHub in this case. I am using GitHub. Now there, are, now, there are other repositories such as GitLab, for example. GitHub isn't the only way to go, but I, I use GitHub. And so um, I made an attempt to push the changes to GitHub and I ran into an error. So I'm going to attempt to resolve the error through GitHub Desktop, which I installed on the computer. This is one of many ways 
to interact with Git and in this case, GitHub. So I'm going to use the visual method here through the Git um, Hub desktop. It's already selected on my uh, other project from Linux. And so I'm going to switch to the project here that I designed for Windows. And I see that the button to push the changes is highlighted. So we click the button and we wait for a response from GitHub. Here it gives us an error message that the email address that we have on file on GitHub is set up in such a way where when we try to push changes to GitHub using that email address, there is a conflict. It's saying that the email address is registered as private. And so any attempt to modify that email address is invalid. So to get this to work, I did go on GitHub and I temporarily changed my setting from private to public in terms of the email address. Once I made the corrections, I made another attempt to push the changes. And this time the push was successful. And so when you're using Git, you have to be aware of a variety of administrative settings and requirements behind the scenes. Now that the changes have been pushed to the GitHub repository, I would like to visit that GitHub repository at github.com forward slash Michael Gaucher. GitHub.com forward slash Michael Gaucher. I click on repositories and then I click on Gaucher RSS Reader MSWPF. So now that I'm in this repository, I can uh, browse through the different folders that are represented through the web page and I can see which changes are, were made at the root level or at a um, in a subdirectory or a, at a um, lower level in the project. And here I have a, a human um, readable indication of the time when these things were done over in the third column. And so we can see that changes were made a few minutes ago and this is very promising. So we do have a very strong uh, indication that our changes now exist in the GitHub repository and can then be downloaded to any other computer that has access to GitHub. And so with that done, it's a, a good time now to um, do a test of the program. And I want to do this outside of SQL Server, or should I say Visual Studio. So I don't have Visual Studio running. And the, in the previous video, we populated the database using the conversion program. So there's data in the database. What I want to do now is delete this data. So let's get rid of all that data that we have put in the database. So I'm going to uh, issue uh, delete statements to the SQL Server database, and that will remove the data from the database. Let's execute the select query and see that we have zero records in the database. So now that that's done, we can go to the directory that contains the most recent version of the software program, the software executable file. So when we're in Visual Studio, it actually generates files behind the scenes. And so you can develop a sense that Visual Studio is where everything happens, but in fact, Visual Studio is not where everything happens. So there's a bin directory, and in this case, we were in the debug configuration, and it generated an executable file. And now I can double click on that executable file right, right now. And all that would simply do is open up the command line window, run the program and then close it. I really don't like doing things that way. And so I want to set up a persistent 
command line window in which um, I can run the program and see the results of that execution in a persistent window. And so I just ran the program. It took less than uh, a second. It took a fraction of a second to run the program. Much faster than what we saw when we ran it in Visual Studio. And so Visual Studio adds some overhead for the purposes of debugging and allowing us to inspect the program visually. But the actual program itself is highly efficient and runs quite quite fast. But on an Intel Pentium processor, we're going to have a little bit of a slowdown when using Visual Studio. And then there's all the data and now we can move on to the next phase, which is a GUI program.